Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Raised bed gardening is all the rage, and for good reason. Wow, you can get a lot of gardening done in a small space, whether you live in the city, suburbia, or out in a large area. And what's not to love about it? It puts it higher, it makes it productive, suppresses weeds, makes less water be used, and it's just a fun way to keep your garden ordered. Well, we've built this great garden box, and I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to use vinyl fence parts from your home center, and I've got a great resource sheet I'm gonna give you. Stay tuned. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Dirt Farmer Maggie and I love gardening, and we especially like having these raised bed garden boxes. Now, what you see here is a double decker. There's different configurations, single heights, triple heights. But in this episode, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to build this system using off-the-shelf parts from your home improvement center. You're gonna need a basic set of tools. And before you get started, I suggest you go to our website at www.dirtfarmerj.com and download the little resource sheet. Now, it's not much to look at, it's all hand-drawn, but it'll give you a lot of information very quickly, including dimensions, cut points, how to lay things out, and common configurations. So what you're looking at here is a four by eight setup. We build these in four by four, four by eight, and four by 12, and they're very modular, just depending on the amount of corner posts and line posts and the length of the side boxes. We always build them, or the side rails, excuse me, we always build them four foot wide and the space we put in between each of the gardens is about four foot. Now I'm not showing you our garden right now. You wanna know why? It's not photogenic. It's in the middle of refurbishment right now and when it's done, including a complete layout of these and all the irrigation that goes in them and the chip pass, we'll be sure to share it with you and show you what we've done and maybe you can pass on to us some of the artistry you've created in your food plot as well. Well, let's get started and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to build these beautiful and durable garden boxes. All right, to make these raised garden boxes out of vinyl uh, fence materials is a basic set of tools and let's just walk them. Of course, you're gonna need a tape measure, uh, a pencil. You need uh, one of these types of squares. We'll make it a lot easier and you'll see why in a few minutes. Although you, you could use a combination square, you'll need some kind of saw with a uh, fairly fine tooth blade. We like this little six and a half inch um, cordless circular saw, but you could use a fine tooth saber saw or known as a jigsaw commonly. You'll need a little four inch grinder with a little um, fine cutoff wheel. You'll use that to cut the sides or the ends of the slots, not the sides. Also, uh, either just a standard um, bare um, hacksaw blade or something that's in a holder as well to finish up the cuts in the corner. And then, of course, you need the material itself. Now, we use uh, here in the United States 5 inch by 5 inch. I don't know what the equivalent is in our European friends' countries, uh, but uh, 5 by 5 uh, post material and the fence rail itself is one and a half by five and a half and of course the slots that it goes in match the dimensions of that fence material. Here's something I would suggest just a tip for you. Number one, get as much recycled stuff as you can. This will last for several years. It's got UV protectant in it so it'll stay white out there without getting sunbeat, without having to be painted, uh, but go for recycle. Or when you go down to your home improvement store, always look to see if there's damaged goods. It's not uncommon when they're loading the bunks with these large 16 foot sections of this material, of a fence rail, uh, for somebody to hit it on something or to put a, a fork through it and dent it. As long as it's still structurally sound and you can turn the damage to the inside, why not buy it at less expensively? Uh, in one case, I was able to buy some at 70% off, not bad. So um, that's another way to do this. Uh, something to think about also, if you notice on this post right here, this is actually a line post for a triple rail and it's been used before, but it'll do just fine for us. These, because the holes go straight through, 
You can see there's a match and a match. Um, those are line posts, or excuse me, the inline posts won't work as corners, but I try to use those if at all possible and enlarge them to a double uh, deck stack. And I'll show you the layout on that in a moment. Lastly, I've provided some uh, construction notes and some drawings for uh, dimensions and tips and techniques. It's available as a PDF up on our website at www.dirtfarmerj.com. You can go up there and download them and I'll provide the link in the description below. And while these are all hand drawn, uh, they'll still be handy to you. I think you'll get some good information from them. It'll make it easier for you. This is just one type. We'll actually be doing some other types of beds in the future. This is a double decker. Uh, you can do single, single deckers, triple deckers with different reinforcement. But these are the supplies. I did forget one other thing that I should have added in here. You're going to need a drill bit, about a half inch drill bit, a drill motor, and you're going to need some poly rope as well. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. Well, let's go ahead and get started with laying out these corner and inline posts. Okay, let's go ahead and lay out, uh, let's do an inline post to begin with. Now I'm using something that's already been, uh, where the sockets have been cut here. And you can see if I turn it this way and look at it this way, that that's a through cut. So it's gotta be an inline post that I make out of uh, this post. By the way, the price point on this was, was free. So um, there's gonna be some waste in this, but it's all right simply because the price was so great. So the first thing we're gonna do is I need to start all of my posts at 17 inches long. So there's my 17 inch mark right there. And what I'll do is go ahead and extend that line all the way around because I will be cutting it using a saw. And I'm just gonna go ahead and boom, right around. Okay, so I'm going to cut on that side of the line. I'm going to end up with a nice 17 inch uh, inline post here. And depending on the configuration, whether it's a 4x4, a 4x8, or a 4x12 box, depends on how many of these inline rails you need. That's all laid out for you here in the instruction sheets that are available to you. The second thing I need to do, these slots are only wide enough to accommodate one rail, which is not tall enough for our system. We want a double like this. So what I need to do is enlarge the slots uh, to make that have at least not enlarge them, lengthen them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of cheat. I love these little um, triangle rules here. Uh, and uh, so what I'm going to do is find on the wiggle side over here, this marker, what's in line. And I'm just going to extend the line out. Now, to know where I need to stop, by the way, let's first of all, I, I kind of got ahead of myself here. Let's go ahead and measure this at 11 inches because that's two times five and a half. That is the length of the socket. And I'll go ahead and just throw in a mark. And I'm going to make it a pencil width wider. And then I'm going to take the same thing over here, find the other wiggle point on here, and just simply extend the line. Okay? So there I've got this. It's going to come out. We're going to cut it afterwards. Let's roll it and do that again. There's my 11. Okay, so there's your waist right there. Now, let's just look at this really quickly though, just to review what you're doing. 17 inch overall length, two inches from here to here, 11 inches from here to here, and then what's that leave you? Four inches at the bottom right there, overall 17. You can see all the dimensions right there. All right, now let's go ahead and get this cut. You'll notice though that right here, this is too close to do the next one. This is actually gonna be waste. And like I said, uh, the price point is right. If you're really you know, concerned about that and you wanna shorten things, you can do that. But we found the 17 inch length to be perfect for what we need. Uh, it gives the right amount of anchorage in the ground. And so it might be a false economy to try to shorten the posts up. So here we go. Let's get these going. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use uh, uh, a little cordless circular saw. We set it fairly shallow. And we're just simply going to do a plunge cut 
and uh, you, you won't be able to see this very well. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have you come around the other side here and watch from this side of the saw and see what's happening. See right here? So I'm gonna do a plunge cut. Let's stop right here where before we overrun the line. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, now we have both of those there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch tools and I'm gonna go to a grinder with a little four inch uh, cutoff wheel. Here we go. We're gonna simply enter this in and again, let's not overrun the cuts. I'm just gonna bring it down right here till it touches, the kerf touches, and then we'll hand saw it out. Here we go. And of course, we'd be doing this on the other side as well. Now we're gonna use a hacksaw. All right, let's go ahead and clean up the corners here. You can either use a standard, just a hacksaw blade, I like to orient it so the teeth are coming towards me so it cuts on the pole instead of binding. Or you can use one of these little handheld uh, holders like this, either way. So let's start with a simple. I'm just gonna simply put her in here and pull cut until I get to the corner. Do the same thing on the other. You can see it start to let loose right away. Rotate the saw. And there you go, now you have an extended slot. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, let's go ahead and cut it to length. We're just gonna rotate around as we go here, cutting to uh, the right side of the line, my right side, your left, so we don't cut into the overall 17 inch length. an inline post right here. That's the top where the cap's gonna go. This is the part that gets buried in the ground, kind of completes a socket in the ground to stabilize it. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do right here though is drill in a little bit of a hole right here. Uh, you're gonna need a hole on the inside of these here where a piece of uh, twine's gonna go to the other side. And when this is filled with two fence rails, you need a place to be able to pass the string through. So we're going to go ahead and do that. You could actually do that before you drill, uh, if you're doing, or before you cut, if you've got a um, a whole pole that doesn't have, or excuse me, a post that doesn't have any of the sockets cut. But we'll need to do a little bit of relief there uh, for the string to go through or the poly rope. You'll see what I mean on that in just a little bit. One other thing I need to mention to you is that if you are cutting the sockets uh, from pieces of fence posts that already have partial cuts in it, uh, it is very difficult to put a space on the side, right? You'll need a notch or a half drill right there where the restraint system goes in uh, from these side to side to stop the sides of the bed from bowing. It's a really simple restraint system. I simply use the poly baling cord that's used for alfalfa bales, you can get it in an agricultural store, or you can use poly rope that you purchase from your favorite home improvement store. But if you try to drill where you already have part of the material gone, the drill's gonna wanna go out to the side and deflect, it's not gonna work. So in the case where you have something like this, if you just go halfway down, and in this case, I can see where the halfway down is, you can use like a pair of nippers like this Okay, so what I'm going to do here is cut a notch at the halfway point. Uh, so that's five and a half. Let's just go ahead and throw that on there so I'm not guessing. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a notch like here. There's nothing scientific. It just has to be big enough that the rope can pass through it. And then I'm going to come right over here and do the same thing. Let's get that big enough that you're not messing with it. This is hidden and it's going 
when it's standing uh, up in the garden like this, this is going to the inside of the bed. There's another post on the other way. Now we need to do the other match set. All right, let's move on to the corner posts. How they differ from the inline posts, the inline posts have got that slot going all the way through, whereas the corner posts have those slots in adjacent. One's gonna be here, one will be there, or it'll always be right around the corner, not across from each other, okay? And when you're building these, uh, not that I know how this happened, but a friend told me about this, that you can end up with a lot of the wrong parts if you're not careful. So keep good track of how many corners you need, how many end lines, so you don't end up wasting material or maybe having extras left over so you have to build more. Anyway, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and lay out a corner layout. So we know right away you have a 17 inch length. We have a two inch start on the socket top. We add 11 inches to that, that takes 13, and we should have four inches left over. So that's our basic layout for uh, the two of them. And we need the same thing on this side right here adjacent. So we're gonna do two inches right here. We're gonna do um, 11 inches on top of that. So we'll have 13, and then we add four and we end up with 17. And there is a layout for this. So let's go ahead and do some real quick marks on this. There's the top, or excuse me, bottom of the socket, bottom of the socket, overall post length. Let's just double check. I got a little rounded off there. There we go. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and put the top and bottom of the sockets in. The nice thing about pencil on this vinyl, it all cleans up afterwards as well. So we know this. And if you look on my square right here, I have marked, you can barely see it, but right there is where one of the socket lines are. So I can always just throw that right on there and just mark the socket. And there it is. Flip it to the other side. I've got the other side right there ready to go. Fast, huh? So there's one. I'll just do the other side. Okay, so notice, or just double check your work. They're adjacent to each other. So let's go ahead and get those cut out. All right, now we have corner posts, we have line posts. Let's go ahead and do a mock-up. We'll set up the table of all the parts you need for a four by eight. All right, we've now cut all of our corner posts and depending on the configuration of the box that we're gonna build, all the line posts as well. Now I wanna show you very quickly how adaptable this system is and how you can end up uh, using very efficiently the material that you buy. Uh, the fence rails are sold in 16 foot section so it makes it very efficient because everything on here is built on four foot increments so the standard boxes we build are either four by four four by eight or four by twelve again all multiples of four come out of uh 16 foot lengths of sidewall very nicely so i'm showing you right here uh the basic components if i was going to build a four by four box obviously this is not set up to scale i would start with four corner posts like this I would end up with my sections, double stacks of four foot rail. So I would need two, four, six, eight, four footers. Uh, that's all on the sheet that I give you as well for the recipe for each one of these boxes. Uh, and that would build the sides. I would screw them together. And then of course, here's the caps and you put caps on everything uh, and bury it in there, square it up and fill it up and enjoy it, including getting uh, 
some irrigation. I'll show you in another episode there how to do that. But this is the first configuration. The second one, again, not the scale. If we were going to put four foot in walls and eight foot side walls, then what I would do is throw in these line rails right through the middle, and they would be set right at the four foot section. So not the scale, but envision it with me. Four foot this way, eight foot this way, but that's two fours. This is centered right here, uh, and that becomes your four by eight. Well, the next one up is if you're gonna do a four by 12, again, the side walls would be uh, 12 footers. You would need four 12 footers and four, uh, four footers to build that. Now what you would do is put these at the third, uh, one third length, right like this. Uh, and what you would have is four foot on this side, four foot, four foot, four foot, and then four foot here. Uh, and then there are those tensioners that are put in across the middle. And we did some notches on this one right here, as you can see. All these would be notched. And when you install it, square it up, then you're going to use some poly twine, twine it through. I use a trucker's hitch to tighten it, not to hourglass it and not to let it bow out, but to keep it nice and straight. And uh, we put about four foot aisles between the boxes. We find that that's wide enough for two of us to work at and to get up and down there and to let vines and plants spill over the side here. Well, let's go ahead and assemble one of these very quickly. And then you can see just how simple it is and how easily you can reconfigure it. Let's do that. All right, so when you go to cut this material, this PVC fence rail, uh, it's got these little stiffener ribs in it. And vinyl is a little bit grabby when you go to cut it. So don't fall to the myth that these are called chop saws. You're just going to lower the blade in it. You need to kind of gentle the blade into the material so it doesn't grab and you get a nice clean cut. So we're going to go ahead. I'm just using this little bit of scrap right here. Um, and as you can see in the background, it throws a lot of chips. So I do all this operation all at once so you can clean it up all at once. So... Here we go, we're gonna take this, which is now this like scrap piece that's really rough. We're gonna put it over here. I'm gonna start the saw and then bring it into it a little bit. Slow and steady is better. And then what you can see here is we have a really nice cut. That was the old end, there's the new end. And uh, that's how you're gonna cut these rails. All right, let's go ahead and assemble these. Now, the, uh, the sequence that I always take is to begin with the ends. They're easier to handle. And you'll see that I am running the, uh, running the rails through the body of the post to the other side. You'll see a little bit more about that to give it more rigidity. But we make uh, both sets of ends and then slide in the side panels. And before assembling the other end, depending if it's an eight foot or a 12 foot box, you also need to slide on your inline posts and then uh, position them at final uh, when you put the box in the garden. Let's go ahead and get this going here. So what I have here, uh, as you can see, that's the two inch on the top. There's the two inch on the top. We're going to go ahead and start with a pair here. And I'm going to go ahead and just move this out of the way. I'll go ahead and run this in all the way to the other side. And you can always double check these. As you can see, these are recycled. Some of them look pretty dingy, but you know what? They look great in the garden when you get mulch around them or vines plant, you know, coming over the side of them. So don't worry about it. You can invest in brand new if you want, but you'll see some of that here. Here we've got two. There I've got two that are going all the way. And if you look in here, you can see that I've pushed this all the way to the other side right there. So those are mounted where I want them. And I'm just gonna square them. And then it's really simple. All we're gonna do is use some screws. I happen to have some two inchers. Not that you need that much, but it makes it easier to reach in a little bit too. And we're just gonna come on down here. And you're gonna see, I'm just gonna drive the screw right there. To hold them in place. And you don't need to follow me here, but I'm just gonna do the same thing from the other side. Okay, so now those are affixed. As you can see, they're not gonna come out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and move this over to the other. 
Again, make sure that you mount it correctly. I don't know, I heard of a guy one time that did it this way. Uh, but anyway, you can just make sure you put it this way so they're all the same. Put them in till they're hard to the other side and you can see that in the end here. They're going all the way here and you get this really nice solid connection. Again, a couple screws, top and bottom. All right, now you have an end panel that's ready to go. All right, I'll go ahead and make up another one, then we'll install the sides. We now have the uh, end panels put together, and we're going to put in the side rails here. And before we put the other end rail in, we're going to go ahead and put these uh, inline posts at the halfway mark. But let's go ahead. You can see me right here from there. I'm going to go ahead and slide this in. And because this goes all the way through, this is simply going to butt against it right there. We've got our first one in. Let's go ahead and take our second one. We're just going to stack it on top of the other one. And sometimes these are a little short, so you just have to raise them and then get them in there. And then come around here, and I'm going to show you here on the top of these. The 90 degree turns, you'll need to adjust this till it's where it needs to be. And as you can see, this is colliding with that. But now I can go ahead and drive a screw right there at the top. And I'm going to go to the bottom and do the same thing. All right, we'll do the same thing on there. Next thing we're going to do is slide on our center posts. All right, now that we have our side rails in, uh, if you were doing a 12 foot uh, bed you would need to place two of these here one at the four foot one at the eight foot mark since we're doing an eight foot bed We're going to place one of these uh, Starting on the other end. We're going to slide this down along uh, Making sure yeah, I just did it making sure to put them the right way this thicker part to the bottom This to the top and we're going to slide it down one other thing I need to make sure is those notches you're on the inside of the bed right now so with those notches right there need to go towards the inside and then the other side will be a match set of that notch that will then allow uh, the tie or the restraint system to go in. So we're going to go ahead and slide it on and put it over here. All right, so we now have that inline post there in place. Uh, this work table isn't big enough to do a 4 by 8 so we're going to move it onto the floor here in the shop and we'll show you the completed bed uh, and a few other little tips about this. And let's go to it. All right, now we've assembled the whole four by eight box here. You can see we're all the way over here, uh, eight foot sidewalls, um, everything's put together. You can see down in this corner here uh, that the screws on this right here hold the corners tight so you can uh, flex it, but it keeps it all together until you can square the box up. There's screws right here as well that um, allow you to put that center post where it needs to be on the center mark. All right, now it's time to install your new garden box out in your garden. So a couple things you're gonna do. Number one, you'll notice that there's that much distance below the bottom edge of the sidewall. And so you're just gonna dig, in this case, six shallow pocket holes. And I use a string line to get one edge where I want uh, if it's in a whole set, the right distance from what's already there, or if you're putting in the first ones, uh, square it up. Take time to make it look pretty, because you're going to enjoy this for many years to come. And you're going to dig in these six pockets, set these down until this sits on the ground. Um, and then what happens is uh, you may need to level them a little bit. Uh, I'm not super particular, but if you've got really hilly ground uh, or lumpy, then you may want to put like shallow troughs along the side until this all settles down and has a solid footing all around. The next thing you need to do, because this is vinyl, uh, it's not going to have a lot of structural strength down through the middle, especially when you get to the 12 footer. So this is a really simple low tech restraint system. Do you remember those notches that we put on the side of the line posts over here? All we do is we take this type of polytwine that's used for baling alfalfa 
run it through those holes, tie a loop, and then simply do a cinch back like this. Now we don't over tighten it because if you over tighten it, you're gonna hourglass your sides, they'll be caved in. Um, and we don't over loosen it so you don't end up with bellies along the side when it gets filled with soil or potting mix or whatever your growing medium is. So, uh, and then one other thing I would suggest is stand maybe 30, 40 feet away and look down the sides and get a good look of how straight they are. And just do a little bit of work to fine adjust these and get them where you want. And then you can just tie them off and that's going to stop those from spreading. One other thing I would mention here, and that is we put the restraint holes about the center point. As you can see right in line, right where uh, the two fence rails are. And that does a good job of keeping these upright as you pull them. It doesn't tend to take the posts and do this or do that just kind of brings them in nice like that. Now the next thing to do is just to put the caps on. That's just real simple. They're just press-ons. And as you can see, that trims it up beautifully right away. Now the only thing that's left to do here is to take it in the garden and you have a couple choices. I always try to put in irrigation from the get-go and we'll show you that in another video. Meanwhile, you can go check out one. There's a link in the description below just for general purpose, drip watering using PVC and a 16 inch drill bit, uh, common ball valves, PVC ball valves. We adapt that system and we utilize that to make sure that the drip systems run in this so we're not dependent on hand watering. All right, so if you found this to be helpful or you would like to give us some more tips about what you're doing and to pass it on to your fellow viewers, do so in the comment section below. If you like the video, please like it. Better yet, subscribe to our channel. And when you do, ring the bell and you'll be notified approximately every Friday of great content from Maggie's Kitchen here in the shop, out in the garden, the yardscape. Great product reviews. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.